In life, you can never be sure what you're going to get, because over the past few days, I had been writing a script about Redis, which was basically a eulogy. This is because, since going closed source, the software had seriously fallen behind its major competitor and fork, Valky. Take, for example, IO Threads. Both Redis 7.2 and Valky 8.0 and beyond support them. But when testing them both, Valky pulls in double the number of requests per second. That alone made it feel like Redis had completely lost its edge. But just as I was recording this eulogy yesterday, something unexpected happened. Redis came back to open source and effectively came back from the dead. Version 8 of Redis, also known as Redis Open Source, is now licensed under the AGPL v3, a true open source license unlike the source available one that they switched to in 7.4. Whilst this news is good enough by itself, I'm really happy they've come back to supporting open source, it wasn't the only change that came with the version 8 released, as they also dropped a massive performance boost that now puts Redis ahead of Valky. To show what I mean, if I go ahead and run Redis 8.0, or Redis Open Source, with 15 IO threads, which is the same number that I was running both Valky and Redis 7.2 with, when I run my benchmark against it, you can see this time I'm getting close to 1 million operations per second, which is 3 times faster than Redis 7.2, and about 50% faster than Valky 8.1, at least when it comes to my own testing. Redis didn't just wake up from the dead, it also jumped out of its grave and decided to win an Olympic medal at the same time. This was also bad timing for me to drop a video about scaling Redis to 1 million operations per second using horizontal scaling, because, well, vertical scaling is back. Not only this, however, but I was about to drop a video writing Redis off as no longer being viable, which also would have aged like milk. This is perhaps one situation where my time management skills and the lead time it takes for me to produce videos comes in handy. In addition to now being open source and being able to hit 1 million operations per second using IO threads, Redis version 8 also happens to have improved single-threaded performance, at least when compared to version 7.2. As you can see, with the newest version of Redis, I'm getting an additional 50,000 requests per second. This much-welcomed boost in performance starts to add in some colour back into Redis's cheeks. But it's not the only hand that they have to play with perhaps their best card being Salvatore Sanfilippo, also known as Antirez, who was the original creator of Redis but stepped down from the project in 2020. However, news broke out at the end of last year that Salvatore had rejoined the team, and by all reports, was instrumental in pushing Redis back to its open source roots, and appears to have brought back some of the original magic that was associated with the project. However, the ecosystem outside of Redis has evolved, as there are now multiple forks and Redis compatible alternatives, which makes the future of the space seem a little uncertain. If you'd had asked me a week ago which piece of software I thought would be the clear winner, then I would have said Valky without any hesitation. Now, however, it's not so clear cut. Of course, plenty of people are still unhappy with Redis for going closed source in the first place, which is fully understandable. However, they're not the only company to have done this in recent times and then reverted back to open source, with one recent example being Elastic when it came to Elasticsearch, who reverted their decision to go closed source in August of 2024, making the situation now with Redis feel very much like deja vu. In any case, both companies, I think, realised that alienating the community was a huge misstep, especially as both of them, and others like HashiCorp, had built their products on the back of the open source community. And by suddenly changing the license, it's a huge betrayal to those that contributed to the project. Now, however, both Elastic and Redis have changed course yet again, this time moving away from the source available license, instead adopting the AGPL v3, which is not only an overcorrection in order to rebuild trust, but also helps to focus on their issues when it comes to cloud providers. Speaking of which, however, Redis isn't necessarily in the clear, as major cloud providers now offer Valky by default, and in some cases, like AWS, they even provide discounts to using it instead of using Redis.
If that wasn't bad enough by itself, Valky also has the backing of the Linux Foundation, which means a massive support base and an open governance model that avoids single entity control. It's a pretty tough competitor to go up against. Perhaps the biggest threat to Redis's future, however, was that many Linux distributions were starting to remove it from their package repositories. Take Arch as an example, which had given a 14-day notice that Redis was going to be replaced with Valky. This essentially would have meant the end of Redis, in my opinion. However, now with Redis being open source again from version 8, I don't think this decision will remain. But it's still a rather precarious position to be in. Despite this near-death experience, however, Redis does seem to be showing signs of not only surviving, but potentially thriving, at least from a technical point of view. Whilst Valky did manage to get its implementation of IO threads out first, Redis version 8 also brings about a number of other new features that help to differentiate it from its forks, such as Valky, and other implementations. These features include JSON support, time series, and even vectors, all three of which I'm really interested to try out in the near future to see how useful they actually are. Personally, I'm glad to see this level of competition in the key value data store space, as it pushes both sides to innovate, and ultimately, that benefits all of us as software consumers. But that begs the question, what does the end game look like? Are we going to see one player rise to the top? Well, maybe. But with the amount of investment behind Valky, Redis refusing to go quietly, and other players like DragonflyDB and KeyDB in the mix, I think we're just getting started in the key value DB space. Which is ironic, because it felt like Redis was pretty much complete from a software point of view before all of this started. One thing I do think, however, is that if Redis really wants to go all in on this comeback, the next best move would be to fully revert the change they made to both their branding and to consider getting rid of their new but infamous logo. Whilst the new one probably cost a pretty penny, I think all of us would appreciate the old one being returned. That said, for some people, this move won't be enough. And I get it. Based on many of the comments online, Redis's move towards closed source ended up breaking a lot of trust, so much so that they're now only considering Valky. When a project such as Redis pulls the proverbial rug out from underneath you, it's hard to trust it again. That took me like five takes to say. In any case, as they say down in Louisiana, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, can't get fooled again. According to the correspondence from Redis, they seem to believe that this whole forking situation was worth it. They mentioned that they succeeded in forcing cloud providers to maintain their own forks, which was the originally stated goal of going closed source in the first place. Whilst I can somewhat see that being the case, to me, it feels a lot like mission accomplished. I never thought I'd do a video with two George W. Bush quotes inside, but well, here we are. Ultimately, however, I think the core reason for Redis coming back to open source is because the community didn't accept the licensing change. In fact, the team at Redis do acknowledge that the licensing change hurt their relationship with the community. And by reading between the lines, I interpret this as an admission that the original move was a mistake. So whilst Valky is still going to be my preferred choice for the immediate future, I am really happy to see this outcome from Redis. And whilst last year's decision was disappointing, I'm choosing to see this as the win that it is. And so I'm going to welcome back open source Redis with open arms.